the future. A place that comes hurtling towards us faster than we like, that we love to think about, make predictions, speculate and hope about. Especially for us investors when we think about where we're going to make our money and where we're going to get those nice juicy returns from. It's often been said throughout history that prediction is difficult, especially when it's about the future. Sometimes we can get right or pretty close. Just watch this clip from Tomorrow's World all the way back in 1994. Imagine a world where every word ever written, every picture ever painted and every film ever shot could be viewed instantly in your home via an information superhighway, a high capacity digital communications network. What that would mean is you could transform your home into a mammoth interactive entertainment centre with the odd stock exchange and shopping centre thrown in. It sounds pretty grand, but it all comes down to computers communicating. And in fact, that's already happening on something called the internet that anyone in the world with a computer and a modem to connect it to a telephone line can subscribe to. The However, on the flip side, there have been some absolute howlers of prediction in the past just listen to some of these. We don't like their sound. Groups with the guitars are on the way out. That was Decca recording refusing to sign the Beatles back in 1962. Hmm, I think they missed out that one. Here's another corker. I think there's a market for maybe five computers. That's a quote from 1943 from a guy called Thomas Watson, the chairman of IBM. And finally, the amount of times Robert Kiyosaki, the famous author and investor who's predicted a market crash nearly a dozen times throughout the longest bull run in history. Picking individual winning stocks is just as challenging and many of you will be familiar with the fact that most managed funds from the world's best fund managers fail to beat the passive index funds in the long term. In fact, around 90% of them fail to do this over the long periods of time. Doesn't matter how smart you are, trying to get things right is no easy feat. But this got me thinking, what if there was a way to invest in the future in areas of technology that we know are going to significantly contribute to growth but without having to go through the pain of trying to select the individual winning companies, because we all know how hard that can be, especially in the last few weeks. So this is when I started to look into ways in which we could leverage the investor's best friend, the ETF, to invest in the future. We can already do lots of interesting things with exchange traded funds, either track markets passively like the FTSE 100 and the S&P 500, or we can even use them to buy commodities like gold, lumber, and even real estate. Now, as investors, all we need to do is own a single ETF, hold one small share, and then we get access to everything that it holds, usually for quite a low cost to get us into it. So what if we could invest in an ETF that holds everything we could need for the future? Would that be too much to ask? Well, this is where Megatrend ETFs come in, a collection of investments assembled by BlackRock under their iShares name that you would have probably seen in some of their other investments. These megatrends are essentially future investment themes which bundle together groups of companies who fall into the same sector and will benefit from that specific market's expansion. So for example, these megatrends include things like automation and robotics, green and clean energy, electric vehicles, digital security, and even internet of things and 5G technology. All of these areas of the economy are in super growth mode. We don't quite know what the end result will be like or who the major players will be or whether the big companies today will still dominate in the years ahead, but we do know that they are set to disrupt and change many different industries. So rather than trying to pick those winning companies and find the needle in the haystack, we'd own the whole haystack. That way we protect ourselves by diversifying our risk just enough to protect ourselves without compromising too much on our potential returns. Here is how BlackRock present these ETFs. Let's say you own the whole market, but really you are more interested in investing in tech. You will just get the returns of the market. Now, let's say you own the NASDAQ, a more focused index dedicated to the stocks in the technology space, but still broadly diversified across lots of different areas, but better returns than the index still, at least currently. Now, finally, compare that to using one of their mega trend indexes, which they reckon has 26 times more return potential than the market highlighting the internet and direct marketing retail index in this example on screen now. So in short, they're saying that by focusing on a specific trend or section of the market, we actually get both better returns and diversification too, at least compared to trying to pick individual stock picks in that sector. Now let's take a little bit more of an in-depth look into some of those sectors and talk about potential investment opportunities. One of the biggest current mega trends is in automation and robotics. This sector is set to grow massively over the next few years, and we are certainly seeing some early shoots of what is to come. Whether it's self-driving cars from Tesla or automated chatbots which pop up on every website, 
Those do get annoying sometimes. More and more manual work is being taken away from humans so we can focus on more interesting things. Analysts in this space predict that global spending in artificial intelligence is expected to double by 2024 getting to around $110 billion. And this results in businesses saving an average of 360 hours per year, which results in a net saving of $4.7 million each. That's according to a Forbes article back in 2017, although I bet a lot has changed since then. Some of the biggest companies in this space, which are included in the iShares Automation and Robotics ETF, that's ticker symbol RBOT, in case you want to check it out, are ServiceNow, AMD, NVIDIA, and Snap, alongside many other companies based around the world. As part of this fund, there are 131 companies currently, which does mean that you'll get a diverse exposure and not be too reliant on any one company shooting up in value. Also, not to forget, if we look at weightings, no company in this particular fund even has 3% of the share. Again, another reason to utilize a fund rather than trying to pick individual stocks if you are really interested in this particular space. Next up, let's take a look at another really interesting space which has seemingly overtaken the world and made investors completely lose their minds and their wallets in the process, electric vehicles. Now, one company comes to mind here that dominates the space and also dominates much of the attention of the news, media, and investors, and that is of course Tesla. But before 2020, the company hovered around the modest $50 share price or close to that point and returned virtually nothing to shareholders for years. This again reminds us that this space is still relatively new and the eventual winners may not necessarily be the ones who are leading today. We know that the world is slowly going to have to move away from gas powered vehicles and the trusty combustion engine will be replaced by electric motors or other hybrid technology in the coming decades. This has been driven both by government legislators and the need to reduce carbon emissions worldwide. For example, here in the UK from 2030, new petrol and diesel car sales will be banned. So the clock is ticking for manufacturers to get their act together. Hybrid cars will be allowed to hang around a little bit longer but only until 2035. So in just 14 short years, which is not long at all, electric vehicles will be the new ones on the road. Although saying all of this, currently electric car sales in the UK only account for 4% of new car sales. So there's a lot of market share out there to take and also a lot of infrastructure that needs to be built, which is why an ETF covering this market is so valuable. As we're not just getting exposure to the companies who make the cars, but also supply critical parts of the infrastructure too. If you want to look more depth into this space, the ETF that covers it is called the iShares Electric Vehicle and Driving Technology ETF, which is a memorable ticker, symbol of ECAR, E-C-A-R. This fund holds 89 different companies of which some are notable holdings. And of course, you've got Tesla, Nvidia, Samsung, Garmin, and Toyota. Sadly, I don't see any Rivian in there. So if you do want to buy companies valued at nearly $100 billion who only produce a handful of cars, then you'll have to go out and see that one for yourself. Sorry guys. And finally, let's take a look at one other mega trend and an area that has already seen some insane growth and a space I've actually spent a lot of my career in and that is cybersecurity. This space is all about the protection of information as consumers and businesses alike go about using internet-based services around the world. Whether it's the growth of online shopping, telemedicine, or even just sitting on a Zoom call trying to figure out why you've been muted again, digital security plays a really important part as the bad guys now have an even easier time getting access to your personal information credit card details, or even your whole identity. As the power of computing increases, so does the power of the bad guys. So digital security companies are always in a cat and mouse game, trying to ensure that they keep one step ahead whilst making sure that businesses can still continue. Trends in this space include the massive increase in online shopping expected to grow consistently around 10% per year from where we are today, around $5 trillion to $6.4 trillion by 2024. Also a growing demand in virtual appointments in the medical space, and the incessant demand from businesses wanting to adopt services in the public cloud using the major giants like Amazon's web services, Microsoft Azure, and even Google's cloud. This sector is set for growth and we can all witness firsthand. Oh, and let me tell you too, these companies make some very nice profits too, as a lot of what they sell is just software, so their costs are really quite low once they start to scale. Some of the biggest companies in this space include the likes of Palo Alto Networks, Rapid7, Zscaler, and Fortinet, and while many hundreds more starting up every year in the Silicon Valley, all looking to solve the many problems and challenges that pop up as technology progresses at an even faster rate. That's everything from firewalls, encryption, multi-factor authentication, virtual security, anti-malware, anti-spam, intrusion prevention, AI-powered security. Okay, you get the picture. A lot of that probably went straight over your head, but the main thing is knowing there is a huge opportunity in this space. But again, who will be the big eventual winners? Who knows? So if you do want to own the whole haystack in this sector, then maybe have a look at the iShares Digital Security ETF, which has a great ticker symbol of LOCK.
L-O-C-K. This fund has seen some market beating performances from its constituent companies. It contains 123 organizations currently with a total fund size of nearly $1.5 billion. And last year generated returns of 44.15%. Pretty good if you can get them. So that's just a handful of what is out there currently. Don't forget, there are loads of other mega trends to invest in that we haven't spoken about in this video. Things like the clean energy sector, digital medicine, and hey, even the metaverse. I've completely left that one out here for now, but there is another huge area that will develop across the next few decades to become something that we probably can't even imagine right now. For now though, think about what the future might hold, but don't think too hard. Remember, it's been said many times before, prediction is difficult, especially about the future. And there are those who don't know, and there are those who don't know that they don't know. So please do all of your own research. And remember, I am not a financial advisor of any kind, and I'm not from the future. Although you will watch me from the future, and this is now technically the past, so... Am I a time traveler? Who knows? But while I work that out, thanks so much for watching the video. Please drop me a like if you have found the video useful. Subscribe for many more if you haven't already. I'll see you guys in the next video. And always, happy investing in the future.